Teachers. How easy is it to tell if a student has a crush on another? And what interesting moments between the two can you share? High school teacher. Depending on the kids' personalities, they either get louder or quieter when their crushes are present. The loud ones are frickin' annoying. The quiet ones are the ones I would say purposefully sit next to their crushes. Oh god, I just realized that my 66-year-old GOV teacher totally knows. Teenagers are not subtle by nature, but they are amazingly oblivious when it comes to matters of the heart. They are really perceptive with other things, though. The boys almost never recognize if a girl likes them, and the girl never realizes that the guy is showing interest. It's funny to watch it happen. It's so blatantly obvious as an outsider, but I remember being just as oblivious as a student. It's called crushing self-doubt. I had a girl literally ask me out, and I slept on it and convinced myself she was just screwing with me in an attempt to embarrass me. Oh, similar to me. There was a girl me and my friends all liked in primary school. I said no in case they had bad intent. What if a girl was just too shy to find out herself? Back in fifth grade, I had a crush on a girl named Jenny. She was sweet and I really liked her, even if, you know, innocently. Since this was fifth grade in the elementary school, I was in Boy Scouts with her brother, and my best friend told said brother that I had a crush on his sister, and he apparently passed it along to Jenny. Toward the end of the school year, she hands me a folded up note telling me not to read it until after I got home. I waited like five minutes and popped that sucker open, and it's basically a confession that her brother told me that I liked her, but that he sometimes lies to her, and she just wanted me to check either yes or no. I was so embarrassed that her brother told her that I just ignored the letter completely. Oof. Well, to be honest, I know people who aren't much better attuned as grown adults either. I am completely oblivious to signals, as are a lot of my friends of all genders. Awkward story. My students are all between 8 and 10, and a few have noticeably hit the point where they're obviously starting to notice the opposite sex. I have two students that I'll give fake names. A boy, James, and a girl, Lucy, in my class. They're always together, recess, lunchtime, free choice, and the two are always working together. They're both very shy and giggly, and it seemed a mutual crush was there, noted by me and their math teacher as well. One day I hear James getting teased by some other kids for his crush on Lucy. His math teacher and I pull him aside and have a talk with him. We tell him that we'll be talking with the class as a whole about crushes and teasing. He's not the only one. His math teacher also tells him that if he does have a crush on Lucy, it's nothing to be embarrassed about because she's a nice, sweet girl. James just looks awkward and asks to go, so we let him. A few days later, I'm walking my kids out to the parent pickup, and I see Lucy's dad is here to pick her up. James waves to both of them as they leave, and I ask if he's been over to Lucy's house to play, and if he knows her dad. Yeah, miss, that's my uncle. Oh, crap. I've encouraged cousin love. I awkwardly gather my nerves to say, Ah, so you remember that talk we had about Lucy and liking her? Well, I didn't realize she was your cousin. Yeah, I thought you didn't. That was weird, miss. Then he just laughed and said he liked a different girl anyway in his older sister's class. In conclusion, 10-year-old is into cougars, not cousins. Oh man, the longing stares across the room, the almost wistful what-ifs you can just see in their eyes. When I was in middle school, that was me. Fortunately, the girls in the bar after 1.30 are usually drunk and desperate too. Uh, Not really. I close down the local bar about once a week. I'm happily married but friends with one of the bartenders, so I hang out until our shift is over if there are sketchy people, and there are almost always sketchy people. It's like the old saying, the odds are good, but the goods are odd. I had a toothless dude and his wife sit down next to me. She literally had a bandaged head wound, and he asked me for a threesome, so she wouldn't have to die not knowing a woman's touch. Uh, computer science slash computational physics university lecturer here. Men tend to outnumber women 10 to 1 in my lecture groups. Odd scenarios. My favorite being four of my students simultaneously being exceedingly into the same exceedingly pretty woman, who was in the realms of shy but unremittingly kind. She also happened to be a lesbian. I knew this and they did not. Of course, only two people could sit next to her in a lecture theater, and an actual friend of hers usually took one of those spots. So the four of them would try to play it cool as she sat down, and then desperately try to get as close as possible without giving the game away. Like a single round of musical chairs where only one person can win, but there is definitely never going to be a prize any of the players want. It's important to also be aware that these were nerds of the highest order, so at a certain point they were just running and shoving one another, charging down the aisle like the adults they apparently were.
I was eventually forced to intervene and end the game when one of them, honest to God, vaulted a row of seats and nearly landed on another student. They deliberately avoided her after I pulled them aside, which was probably great for her, but terrible for me. I found their fruitless game a never-ending source of comedy. I'm a substitute teacher, and my favorite student with a blatant crush experience was with a second grade class. I picked the kids up from the yard after recess, and a boy came to me very upset because one of the girls had been chasing him the entire recess. Once we got back to class, I talked with the girl, asking for her side of the story. Conversation went something like this. Me. Uh, Jose was pretty upset about something that happened this recess. Do you want to tell me what happened? Girl. We were playing. He said you were chasing him. Is that true? Slight blush. Yeah. Do you think he wanted you to be chasing him? No. If you knew he didn't want to be chased, why were you chasing him? Huge blush, guilty smile, and hunched shoulders. He makes me laugh. It's funny how something that would be completely creepy and unacceptable in the realm of grown adults seems so cute when it's between little kids. Don't know what that says about us. I worked in a kindergarten for a brief period between high school and uni, and there were a couple of little five-year-old girls who just walked up to the boys they decided they liked and kissed them forcefully, informing them that they were now their husbands. But the one that sticks to mind is the little two-and-a-half-year-old from my group. She spoke only a little at the time and didn't bother much with learning the names of the grown-ups to any extent, but shortly before I left, they hired a really young guy, about 19, as an assistant. The girl sees him walking into the ward for the first time and just freezes. She actually dropped her toy and her eyes go round like saucers, her jaw dropping. It was both adorable and absolutely hilarious to watch. We introduced him and none of the kids were that fussed, but she just stood there, mouthing his name, whispering it to herself a few times to make sure she got it right. He sat down on the playmat with her and she couldn't take her eyes off him. She offered him a toy which he accepted gracefully, and I swear she lost her breath. From then on, she loved him. She was quite shy to begin with, walking up to him at times, saying his name, and then when she got his attention, she would giggle uncontrollably, blushing bright red, and run away. If he took sick days or didn't come in till late, she would get sort of depressed and not want to play much. All the kids played favorites with the assistants, little boys have their crushes and so on, but this one was a little different. It was as if she had decided he was her soulmate. He was so kind to her, and the kind of relationship they had was never anything that made you think anything creepy. He just couldn't bear to reject her. In the afternoons, he'd read to the kids for as long as they were willing to sit still and listen, and she always made sure to be the one to sit on his lap or next to him to flip the pages. I'm teaching 7th grade right now. It's crazy easy to tell. It makes me wonder if I was that oblivious when I was their age, or worse, if there were girls that were obvious towards me and I didn't notice. It's like they don't even hide it. One of my boys carries a girl's books every day. It's clear to me that he has a crush on her. I learned recently that she has a different one of these guys to carry her books between every class. I mean, that's just manipulative. She's got to know, right? Maybe, maybe not. As clueless as these guys are that carrying books isn't some grand romantic gesture, she may be just as unaware that's why they're doing it. Girlfriends do that stuff for each other all the time. We borrow and lend and carry and hide and all of that. So a guy doing that is basically doing friendship stuff from her perspective. Also, we pay attention to each other a lot. We notice if there's a new haircut or sweater or she's lost weight and all that. That's normal everyday behavior, especially for teenage girls. I've got a ninth grader and I've seen her around some of the guys in her orchestra. They bring her music over, ask with fixed and nervous smiles how she's doing today, sit next to her at picnics and stuff. One of them even asked her to get my recipe for baked beans. And you've got to be desperate for conversation when baked beans recipe seems to be the logical choice. But when I ask if there's any guys into her, she shrugged and says, Nah, boys don't really notice me. I finally sat down and was like, Look, I don't want you spilling this or embarrassing them, but Todd, Joe, and Mike, not real names, all like you. They can't come out and say it, but they are interested in you. Do whatever you want with that knowledge, but you should know what the signs of interest look like. And I laid it out for her. She honestly had no idea what low-key stuff looks like, because movies and all that are always big sweeping gestures, not quietly jockeying for a seat as fourth chair if you're second, so they can sit next to you, or having your eyes way too wide open, or talking to you about some quite banal things just to talk to you. Not that I'm saying guys should all be super romantic and swing for the fences, but a huge number of dudes didn't realize they'd been flirted with over the years. Girls have the same problem. We're not exactly speaking two different languages, but we're sure as hell working from different subtexts. I'll say again, this is just confirming to me that a lot of adults are barely more evolved than kids in how they behave when it comes to matters of the heart.
I have this one teacher that will totally just say anything that's on her mind. Once she just flat out said, Do you guys like each other or what? To these two kids in my class. Within three days, they were dating and still are. That could have just as easily resulted in them being super embarrassed and avoiding each other forever. I know a teacher who did this all of the time. She paired kids together so much in her mind that she was obsessed with getting two kids together. Once there was this girl who likes to hang out with this guy in her class. The very first day she asked if they were dating and the girl just said no because she had a boyfriend and they were very happy. For weeks, the teacher would ask if her and her boyfriend had broken up yet so that her and this other guy could date. Eventually, the girl told her to stop because rumors were starting to spread around the school. Then the day came when the teacher asked and the girl just ran out of the room crying because her boyfriend actually broke up with her. Her and the other boy never got together, but it was funny to see my sister give our teacher the death stare for making her feel bad, even when the teacher told her to stop because it was making her uncomfortable. Band in high school is a funny place. Since kids are around each other a lot more of the time than the average student, they tend to get band goggles. It's pretty obvious to see relationships blossoming. More often than not, it's a good thing, but every now and again you get the older upperclassmen boys going after naive freshman girls. And boy oh boy does that turn ugly quick. The drama can be outrageous. Funniest, most shocking moment, a girl who's an awesome student had been dating a true player on and off for the last year. She went so far to tell me that she got back together with him after he cheated on her. So literally last Friday, I'm sitting in the band hall watching the kids practice. This sweet girl comes into the hall and is walking with a sense of purpose. As she passes me, she says something under her breath that I didn't quite get the first time. Confused by what she said, I watch her walk up to the guy. She grabs him by the shoulders and spins him around. She says something to which he responds with a short answer, but had that look on his face that he got caught doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. She then balls up her fists and socks the guy four to five times and then storms off. At that point, I realized that what she said was, Teacher, you're gonna have to write me an office referral. Best referral ever. I teach English. I remember a star football player, senior, coming into the room to rap with me for a bit before the third period start every Friday. In my third period, a female student, junior, of mine, who was extremely intelligent and very pretty, yet somewhat shy being an AP student and all, was sitting in the front row and always stared at him when he came in. He would talk about football and stuff with me, and every so often I'd look back at her still staring right at him and smiling the entire time. She would not turn that smile off no matter who was looking or what anyone said. It was actually one of the cutest slash saddest things I've ever seen, seeing as how the guy never even turned around to notice her. If he did, who knows, maybe they would have hit it off. Maybe they did after they weren't my students. Is no one going to question that a football player rapped with you during school? Do you teach at East High? Okay, after five people writing me to tell me the meaning of the word rap, I think that no one needed to. At the very least, you guys should have just seen I was making a pop culture reference. Former sixth grade teacher here, I was here to witness one of my kids take his first big leap at lunch. He asked the girl he had a crush on, Will you go on a date with me? She smiled and said yes. Immediately, the boy on the other side of her said, Don't go out with this screw bag, go out with me. She smiled and said okay. He was pretty shattered for the rest of the week. He was in the same class as the girl, so there was a lot of longing looks and wistful sighs. I'm pretty sure that's the kind of thing you remember forever. Middle school is tough, man. I wasn't a teacher. I was a teacher helper? I mean, it was only sixth grade, but it was extremely easy. Looking at everyone facing you, you start to realize what people are focusing on. I know when kids are texting because they look straight at me and every two minutes look down for two seconds and have their hands under the table. For a crush, it is the long stares at the back of their crush's head while fiddling with an object like the pencil or their hair. As a quick look away when the crush looks at them, it's easy. God damn, how many of our teachers were chuckling under their breath watching our antics at school? Anyone else wondering? Oh, it's painfully obvious most of the time. Here are some things I saw. Continuous glances at the same person. Body language that positions the person closer to the other person. Interjecting into a conversation that the person was not engaged in to begin with. Being helpful more so for that person than for anyone else in class. Flirting, obviously. Boastful storytelling. A lot of times it's outlandish and very obviously untrue. Hanging around the other person uninvited. And checking out the other person while oblivious to their surroundings. What's funny is that most people think they're being sneaky or inconspicuous. 
From my vantage point in the front of the classroom, these things seemed so obvious as to be genuinely painful to observe. It was especially painful when the feelings were intentionally unreciprocated. I taught in college, for a bit if you're wondering. I'm not a teacher, but in sixth grade, 2002, a girl in my class, history with Mrs. Thompson, sat in the next row over from me every day. I was crushing on another girl and ignorant of the fact that she liked me. Midwinter, Mrs. Thompson is handing back papers and stops between the two of us while glancing back and forth and says something along the lines of, I don't know who to give this paper back to. She says the girl's first name, or Mr. My last name. Mrs. Thompson hands the paper back to her. She had been practicing writing her name with my last name so much in her notebook, apparently like many teenage girls do, that she had accidentally written it on her homework when she handed it in. Six years later, at my high school graduation, a half dozen of my former teachers, including Mrs. Thompson, were sitting around talking with my friends and me and brought up that paper where a girl had written my last name on her paper. They found it cute and endearing and told other various stories of middle school love. A year and a half ago, I married that girl. College perspective. I can usually tell which of my students have hooked up. I can almost always tell when the girls are crushing on guys in my classes. It's usually painfully obvious, especially from the perspective of the front of the room. I can also tell that you're texting, no matter how much you work to camouflage it. Sometimes when I assign group work of any kind, I like to intentionally split up or subvert the secret lovebirds just to see how they react. I'm a bit of a sadist like that. Oh, freshmen. All pheromones, alcohol, romantic overconfidence, and a complete lack of experience with the real world. So much fun. I work in college and teach early morning classes to 17 to 24-year-olds, mostly. It's painfully obvious who just did a walk of shame to class and occasionally who's screwing someone else in the room. The most awkward thing that ever happened was some guy who came into the class and interrupted a lecture to hit on a girl in the front row. He wasn't even a student, just some idiot who walked by our open campus and recognized the girl through the window as the girl who he saw at Jack in the Box a week earlier. He comes in and just starts talking to her. I'm in such shock that this guy just randomly walked in that I was speechless and just stood there watching it. After about a minute, I came to my senses and realized the situation. Here's this 40-plus-year-old dude tatted up with his pants hanging from his butt Reeking of booze and cigarettes at 9am, hitting on a very uncomfortable looking tiny blonde, 18 years old. I told him this is my classroom and that I wouldn't have him interrupting. He would have to go. He didn't put up a fight, he just asked when the class was over so he could come back to mack him some. I told him we were out at noon. We were really done by 10 and that was the last day of class. The day of the final, a week later, on a different room, I kept my eyes open but he never showed. I asked the student, but she only knew him from a single instance of standing in line in front of him at Jack in the Box. I teach 16-year-olds. When a girl likes a guy, she'll draw hearts on his notes. When a guy likes a girl, he'll draw male anatomy on her notes. That might be the greatest thing I've read in this collection of stories. A couple met in my high school chemistry classroom. This was three years ago. He was a junior in high school. She was a sophomore. They told me last fall that when the date is set, I'll be invited to the wedding. Best example of chemistry ever. This actually happened in my acting class just today. Our teacher said he had an exercise to show us how much subtext there is under the surface of our actions. Pick a person in here who you have something you desperately want to say something to and never could. Think about it really hard and don't make eye contact with them or they'll know. Everyone in this class knows each other very well. There's a lot of dirt to stir up. The silence was deep and uncomfortable. Now, go ahead and say it. You could hear their buttholes pucker. People looked numb with fear and hesitation. The teacher, having proved his point about rich subtext, opened his mouth to end the exercise before anyone could actually speak. Now, just then a kid jumped up from his chair arduously and let loose with, Sadie, you're hot as hell and I want to frick your brains out. The room exploded. The result was pandemonium. One kid was laughing so hard he nearly tipped his desk right over onto the floor. The teacher was in shock. The kid was red in the face and laughing uneasily. The amazing thing was the girl. She didn't smile, didn't acknowledge it, nothing. She just sat there, stock still, like Marie Antoinette at the guillotine, totally above the situation. I think she must have been mortified and didn't know what to do. The teacher's response... I have been doing that exercise for decades and no one has ever actually said anything. The next day, and I crap you not, I saw this kid and Sadie walk in, a little apart, both grinning. He was listening to a song on her iPod. 
They both fell asleep in class. Great success. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, linked at the top of the description. And if you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot, linked in the description too. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.